This is the last video in the discussion of laws of exponents. In a previous video, we were able to talk about or applied the first two laws of exponents. In this next, in this video, we are still going to apply the previous two laws of exponents, but we are going to combine them with the remaining th three laws of exponents. What I am uh, saying is to be discussed by the practice exercise here found in your module. So I only have three, two different examples. I believe that these two different examples could suffice the discussion of the other laws of exponents. So again, with the concern here is to simplify. When you say simplify, you need to give a result that uh, wherein there are no other expressions that can be combined using the laws of exponents. So let's start with number one. As you can see in number one, we have negative exponents and we have zero exponent. Well, do not apply automatically law of negative exponents here. The reason why law of negative exponents is, is uh, designed to be placed on as the fifth law of exponent is because it should be applied last. What we can do here is to simplify the third uh, the third base, uh, the third M, um, expression with base m. This is m to the power of zero. m to the power of zero, meaning any uh, expression raised to the power of zero could be equal to one. Okay, so that means it's just equal to one. So we can rewrite this as m to the power of negative six, m to the power of seven times one, not m to the power of one, huh? times one, times m squared, times m to the power of four. One will just be placed as the numerical coefficient, but there's no need for us to write it later. So it stays um, it stays invisible later. So what we need to do now is to combine using the um, multiplication law for the other four um, uh, base of m. So we have m and I have negative six plus seven. Do not add one because again, it becomes a numerical coefficient plus two plus negative four. And then have here M. So negative six plus seven is one, plus two is three plus negative four, which is a, actually equal to M. Three plus negative four is negative one. Okay, so we have m to the power of negative one. This is the result when we applied the multiplication law of exponents. But of course, uh, in mathematics, uh, there were processes and um, um, concepts uh, that will be applied just to represent our expressions into a, an expression that could be understood uh, better than this one. So we have m to the power of negative one in mathematics. Again, that got me wrong. This is still correct. This is still acceptable, but it would be better for us to use the law of negative exponents so that our all of our exponents will become positive. So this would become, uh, we will apply here the law of negative exponents. We can neutralize the negative exponent by bringing it down and making positive one. The question right now is what should we place here? Okay, is it zero? If it's zero, take note, zero over this will become zero because any number, uh, uh, zero divided by any number is the zero itself. So it's not zero. The, what will remain here is the numerical coefficient placed here. That's why we have the one earlier. One becomes its numerical coefficient. In short, we have here one, but we don't, you did not write one because it automatically means one. The purpose for this is when we move the m to the numerator to neutralize the negative exponent of negative one, we still have one here. What if it's two? If what if? So it becomes two. What if it's seven? So this is seven. What remains at the, in the numerator is the expression with no negative exponents. So it becomes one over m to the power of one, which could be better represented without writing anymore the exponent of one, it's just one to the power, uh, one over m. This is the result for number one. 
we applied the law of zero exponent and the law of negative exponents here. Okay. Number two, the only the, the remaining item for this practice exercise. As we have noticed, our numerator is still to be subjected to an operation. So do not be uh, uh, do not assume that we could automatically apply here the law of the uh, division law because the exponent i mean the numerator is still under another law of exponent which is the power law the power law tells us that if we have here an expression raised to another expo uh, exponent this exponent here must be shared by all coefficients inside so this could become two the exponent of two here is one Okay, and by means of sharing power law, in power law, we are going to multiply exponents. Let me make it clear. Multiplication law, same base, add exponents. Division law, same base, subtract exponents. Power law, share the exponent and multiply the exponents now. So at one times negative one, that's the exponent outside. And then you have x squared times negative 1. And then y, again, y has an exponent 1 here, times negative 1. All over, there's nothing you did in the denominator. So it stays as it is. No need to worry. Okay? And then just simply multiply the exponents of the terms or the coefficients in your numerator. So you have here 2 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. x becomes, the exponent is negative 2, y becomes negative 1, all over y, negative 3. Okay? And then, since we have multiplied, multiplied everything, we may have two different options. I'm going to show you the two different options. Let me just uh, break it here. The first option is for you to apply the law of negative exponents. And as therefore, you will have here, you bring it down to make the exponent positive, so to the power of one. This one, x squared, and this one, y to the power of one. Okay, you brought down all the coefficients in the numerator because all of them has negative exponents. And what will happen in the denominator, you can bring it up. Yeah, okay. That's the application of the law of negative exponents. And then it's not yet done because you can still combine this under division law. So this would become here, okay? The two is still in denominator, and it's just one, a two. And, uh, you don't need to write the exponent one. X squared is in denominator. The coefficient here is one numerical coefficient rather, and you have y cubed minus one as the division law, and then this would be equal to one over two x squared times y squared as 3 minus 2. And since y squared is already a positive exponent, it stays in the numerator. So you have y squared all over 2x squared. This is the result of number 2 for the first possible solution wherein you apply the law of negative exponents. The other half will actually use automatically here. So this not, uh, you can, we are not going to apply this first. We are not going to move this first using the law of negative exponents, but rather let us use here the division law. So this would become, uh, let me use color red. So it's still 2 to the negative, negative 1, x to the negative 2, and subtract exponents, y negative 1 minus negative 3. Okay, subtract. Just like what happened to... Uh, 3 and 1, so 3 minus 1. Then you have negative 1, negative 3. It's negative 1 minus negative 3. Okay? Uh, the purpose for presentation of two different methods is it's up to you which is more comfortable for you. And then here, you have a double negative property. This will become 2 to the power of negative 1, x to the power of negative 2. Again, we did not apply the law of negative exponent yet. And you have y, negative 1, plus 
3. And then you have 2 to the power of negative 1, x to the power of negative 2, y, negative 1 plus 3 is y squared. Applying the, prop, the processes of adding integers properly. And then since you have this, as far as the result of here, and then this is the last time that you could, this is the, the best time for you to apply the loft negative exponent. This will be brought down to the power of one, and then this will also be brought down, but y squared will remain because it has a positive exponent. As you can see, we have two different methods, sorry, two different methods, but we come up with the same result. Again, the purpose for this presentation is for you to decide which is more comfortable with you. But of course, in mathematics, there's no need to rush. That's why we did it step by step. We applied in number two, we applied the power law first, and then it's up to you if you will use the law of negative exponent or just the division law first, later on interchange the processes to get the correct answer. You may review and the, uh, this video, if you're still in confused with the processes here, this is the last video for unit number one. So you need to prepare uh, to view this video and the rest of the previous videos in preparation for our first assessment soon. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.